Hello, I'm David D. Cosmo for Electric City Television, and our program is At Your Service, a program dedicated to the idea of letting people know what kind of services are available in our community to everyone. Our guest today is Mary Garham, who is the administrator of the Lackawanna County Library System. Mary, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. We're, we're so pleased that you could join us. And, and we spoke just a few moments before we went on the air, and I talked about old memories of libraries. And there was that uh, stereotypical situation. You go into a library to either borrow a book or read a book. Uh, if you're in there reading, you are quiet as you can be. And that is your library. But that is not today's library, is it? No, things have changed a lot and in so very many different ways. Um, certainly libraries are not as quiet as they once were. We still have quiet study areas for people who are here to do research or to, you know, to do homework or things of that nature. But we really try to encourage things like collaboration. So we have lots of groups of people who get together to discuss books or talk about topics of the day. Um, we also have lots of programs where children come together to play and have a great, a good time, and they can get pretty noisy, which is, uh -huh. but it makes most people happy to hear them. That that statement alone brings up a question. Uh, it was common, certainly when I was growing up, to go to the library, sometimes for schoolwork, mm -hmm. but often for uh, reading recreation, if I can phrase it in, in right. that way. Are children being encouraged to use the library today? Absolutely. Um, children are really one of our primary audiences. Um, we take very seriously our mission to help children develop early literacy and to educate their parents to help to understand why, the vet, why reading is such a valuable skill. Um, we do a number of things. Um, traditionally, we've done story times for everyone from babies in, in, in their mom's laps um, all the way up to school-age children. We do book clubs for older kids, kids in mid middle school and, and, and you know, that kind of age group. One of the things that we're really proud of, though, is that several of our libraries have become what's called family place libraries. And family place libraries um, encourage children and parents to come to the library to begin to understand the value of play, how play is something that is really significant to a child's education and development. And during those sessions, we bring in um, professionals from the area who have uh, child-oriented kinds of occupations, so people who deal with child development or nutrition or health. Um, and so while the kids are playing with this fabulous collection of toys and, and, and things, um, the parents are there, they can socialize with one another, which is an important thing. Sure. You know, oftentimes, especially stay-at-home parents can be isolated socially. Um, but they also have an opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with these professionals and say, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about my two-year-old speech. Is it, do you think it's okay? Or, you know, um, sometimes I think he doesn't hear me. Do, you know, do you think that's a problem? And the professionals are able to deal with them one-on-one -on -one and help them really understand, um, more often than not, to encourage them and, and um, comfort them. Uh, but, uh, but it also gives them an opportunity to help push them into places where they might need services for their kids. Now, of course, your library system is also blessed with a specific children's mm -hmm. library, too. That is correct. So each of the libraries in Lackawanna County has a children's section. Um, but we have a freestanding children's library here in Scranton. And it is, we believe, the only one in Pennsylvania. Um, it was developed in the mid-1980s. And it is a fabulous spot. Um, it is the Lackawanna County Children's Library. And kids come from all over Lackawanna County to come and see programs, to participate in our story times which, with puppet shows and, and things of that nature. Yeah, it's a great place. Much, uh, many of those people that we uh, are trying to reach through the program are senior citizens, mm. and they may also have that, uh, that outdated outlook at libraries as being that place you come to read a book or borrow a book. I'm not sure that they understand how many services are available, and I don't know that we have time to laundry list all of them, but I think we should highlight some of them that perhaps are not so well known. Uh, now, I did a story with you uh, some time ago 
about the ability of a person to come in here, and especially applies to seniors, who have little or no knowledge of computers. And let's face the fact that our society has come uh, to the extent where virtually everything is or can be or will be Excellent. done by For computers. Sure. And yet we are in an area with an extremely large population of seniors, mm -hmm. many of whom uh, are, are afraid uh, of Excellent. learning. Um, but unless you've stopped it, you have a program to deal with that. We do. Um, so all of our libraries provide assistance with um, learning how to use a computer, learning how to download books or audiobooks or use the internet. Um, we also have some very specific things where people can come in who've just gotten a phone or a tablet or something of that nature, or a laptop. They don't know what to do with it. They yes, don't know how to work it. They can get lost in they, it very easily. Absolutely. Yeah. So you can get one-on-one -on -one help at the library to help you figure out how to do the things that you need to do on it. Um, as you well know, most of our devices today have many more um, apps and services on them than, than you'll ever use. Um, so if you know what it is that you want to do with that device, we can help you figure out how to do it. I also want to mention that um, we have um, something that I think is really important for seniors, um, and it is a home delivery service. It's relatively new. Um, we've always had a books by mail service for people who are literally unable to come into a library. Um, but we now have started a service for people who um, perhaps were served by the bookmobile in the past. We're in the process of ordering a new bookmobile, but currently we don't have one on the road. And so these are people who um, either can't get into a library or who you know, live too far away uh, from a library to make it convenient. And so they can order books from us. We will put them in the mail. They receive them at home, free of charge. They receive them at home. And when they're done with them, they put them back into the mailing envelope, turn the, the, uh, the address card around, and it's postage paid back to the library. It's a great service. Um, not necessary for everybody, but for the people who need it, it is really a lifeline. And, and has that been well received? It has been. It has been. One other thing I want to mention about seniors. Um, we are very aware of the fact that um, we have a population that in Lackawanna County that is aging. And we've been working really hard um, with community partners um, to try to make sure that we are focusing on the things that, that people in this area need. Um, we just finished a whole series of workshops with the Alzheimer's Association. Uh -huh. They were very well received. Um, lots of people came out to the programs at the library, gave them an opportunity to talk about things that, you know, that they're trying to get their mm -hmm. message out sure. about. And it gave us an opportunity to begin to understand a little bit more about that as well. We have worked with the Area Office of Area Office Area Agency for Aging uh, locally, um, and um, we're really looking at the whole issue of senior isolation, which is uh, it's a big deal. We see a lot of it, obviously, in Lackawanna County. We're talking about an elderly person who, maybe in his or her home has no relatives necessarily Absolutely. nearby. And, right. and uh, these are times when we don't even always know our neighbors Absolutely. like we used to. And so they wind up, as you say, isolated in mm -hmm. their home. Right. How can you help them? So we try to bring them in for programs. Um, we do a lot of programs that, um, some of them are literally memory care kinds of programs, but we also um, do a lot of crafts. So we have quilting and um, crocheting and knitting groups. We have um, people who come in to play chess or to play mahjong. Um, and it gives them an opportunity a couple of times a week to get out of the house and to, you know, to come and spend a little bit of time with other people. I think that social aspect of the library is something that people don't think about. I think people sometimes th expect that when you come to the library, you're doing your own thing, you're in your own lane and, and you know, in, on your own channel. But in fact, today's library is a very social place. And, and you also mentioned uh, something that I, I have used on occasion. I'm not sure a lot of people know about the audio book service, and you, you talked about that. How does that work? So we have a very large collection, now about 30,000 items, that um, books and audiobooks that people can download to their own devices, whether it's um, whether it is your cell phone or your tablet or you know something of that nature, 
um, for free. Um, they are popular materials, um, you know, the kinds of things you might come to the library to do your leisure reading. There's some research materials on there as well. Um, it is an incredibly popular service. Last year, we, we circulated almost 100,000 items um, virtually to people. So, so there may be, per, uh, as an example, a, a popular novel yes. uh, that one can use their computer, connect with a library, and get that novel on their computer, can read it on their computer. That's, that's exactly right. Or on their phone or, or on, a, on a tablet. And you can also listen to audiobooks. So, um, so that's a fun thing as yes, well. A yes. lot of people like to do that if they're commuting, if they're walking, for you know, just getting some exercise. Um, we also have downloadable movies. Oh. So we have a, a service called Canopy. Um, and it also has about 30,000 movies on it. There are a lot of um, documentaries, some popular films, um, and that has become a very popular thing as well. And people can download up to five movies um, a month. There are some that, that, you know, don't, there are some times when you can do more than five, but five is, is mm -hmm. you know, our general limit for that. Um, and people love that as well. So again, someone can be in their home, and if they if they take the opportunity to come in and learn how their device works, if they're having any problem right. with it, they can then use that device device in their home to receive these movies or or novels, etc. Now you touched on we talked about children. I'm going going to go up a level now. Uh, it there was a time again when the teenage years. You were completely away from a library unless your particular teacher had an assignment for you. Too true. Uh, and yet, once again, like the young kids, uh, the teenagers are the future. Right. And in a sense, you have to depend on them, but they want to be able to depend on you, but you have to create the want. The, right. They have to want to come. Right. So what can or what are you doing along those lines? You know, teenagers today are incredibly busy more so than we were when we were teenagers. They have so many things that they need to do. They have sports, they have athletics, they have academics, they're trying to get into college, they're you know, take, doing extracurriculars to make them more appealing to the college that they want to get into. So they have a very limited amount of time and so we have to really focus on what is it that we can do that helps them uh, to, to achieve the goals that they're trying to do and that also that interests them. So. Um, we do have um, an online program called uh, Help Now, and it's a homework, homework help program where from 2 o'clock in the afternoon until 11 o'clock at night, you can um, go onto our website and get into this Help Now program, and there are live tutors there who will help you, you know, work through your math or your English or whatever it is that you're, you're trying to deal with um, for free. It's, it's a great program. Um, we also have, um, again, the social aspect. We bring kids in for particular things. A lot of our, our libraries have what they call teen advisory boards, where um, this gives kids a chance to develop leadership skills um, to, in, in service to the library. Um, we also do um, a lot of uh, more um, kind of loungy kinds of, of things, you know, so that kids who are working so hard to, you know, make sure that their resumes look great have a chance to just have some fun. So um, we create spaces in our libraries where they can come and hang out and relax and, and talk with one another, collaborate on programs or projects. Um, so we, we do see more teens than you might expect in the library. And, and their needs as with seniors, often change. Yes. How do you, uh, as the library system, attempt to keep up with those, those particular changes so that you are contemporary mm -hmm. with both the teens, the children, and, and the uh, older adults as well? So um, our librarians are trained professionals who um, who keep up with trends, who understand, you know, um, how to find out what it is that people of all ages are interested in. But it's also one of the things we do with the teen advisory boards. You know, we ask them, 
you know, what are you guys interested in? What are your friends interested in? What kind of books do you want to read? What kind of help do you need with, with you know, your homework? Um, what do you like to do for fun? So, um, so we now have large collections of comic books and manga, which is, you know, the Japanese kind of uh, a comic, um, because those are things that we've been told kids are really interested in. That, that, that is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it is something that you've got to monitor all the time because, again, it's always changing. Absolutely. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Now, uh, you also have been involved in a program, uh, was it Scranton Reads or Lackawanna County Reads? And as I recall, the way that worked was you picked a particular book and you encouraged people to take that book out or read it online. Mm -hmm. And he brought people and had discussions on it. Is right. that still going? How does that work, and, and what's the benefit of that? So um, because of the pandemic, Scranton Reads has been on hiatus, and we did have another uh, project that was countywide that we called um, On the Same Page in Lackawanna County, um, which is something that I think we'll bring back now that people are willing to get back together again in person. Um, but we do continue to have an annual lecture, and in, in, uh, which brings in somebody significant every year. Last year it was David Sedaris. Um, and so what we try to do with that is bring together groups of people who will read a book, learn more about the author, learn more about the author's works, and then invite them to come to a free lecture, usually at the Scranton Cultural Center. And, um, and it's always a great experience. Um, when we had David Sedaris here, he spoke for about an hour and um, at the end of it, we had a book signing, and the book signing lasted three hours. Wow. People stayed in line all that time just to have him I sign mean, a book you, and chat with him a bit. You had some big names. I knew you had Robert Ballard in who found we the did. Titanic. And... Yes, we did. Um, he was wonderful. <laughs> he, he was really great and wonderful with children. He, you know, the kids who came to that program really got a lot of attention from him. We had David McCullough, the late, great David McCullough, um, who was a wonderful speaker. We had Henry Winkler, who you may uh, not know, writes books about dyslexia. He was a dyslexic child himself. Oh, wow. And uh, we have had a number of um, historians, uh, like David Brinkley and James McPherson and Michael Beschloss. Um, and we have, we have somebody wonderful on the line, but we don't have the commitment to the date yet, so I can't tell you well, who it is. Well, this is something, of course, that, that changes tuned. each year, it so does. that uh, yeah. one only has to watch and, and keep in touch with the library Absolutely. to see what's happening. When I was preparing to do this particular program, it was suggested to me that I might ask about the fact that if someone wants a pair of binoculars, they can <laughs> come to the library. Is that true? How do you like that? <laughs> so um, there is something that is gaining popularity. Um, across the region and, and in libraries all over, the, over the, the country called the Library of Things. And so people can borrow things that perhaps they might not, they might know that they're gonna use once or they'd like to try out before they go and buy something. So um, the Scranton Public Library has started um, an extensive collection and it includes things like binoculars, um, the GoPro headset, you yes, can borrow yes. that. You can borrow a metal detector um, a, lot of the, a lot of things that you might have, you know, you, you're not sure you're going to want, but you'd like to try it out. Um, there are also a lot of things related to crafting, you know, um, things that are like a sewing machine or, um, you know, things of, of that nature that you might, you know, not, you might need once and, and, you know, you don't necessarily want to go out and buy yourself. We also have lots of um, board games and puzzles and things of that nature that people can borrow and take home. Now, is there, is there an advisory board for the adults that came up with this? Or? <laughs> That's a good question. <clears throat> um, I think um, since most of us working in libraries are adults, I think we probably have a pretty good sense of what it is that people are looking for. But, um, but that's an interesting idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we keep mentioning, <clears throat> pardon me, libraries. Uh, this is not a single building. That is correct. Uh, how extensive is the Lackawanna County library system? So we have <clears throat> libraries in seven communities in Lackawanna County. Um, here in Scranton, plus Clark Summit, Dalton, um, Moscow, Peckville, and Taylor. Um, so there are buildings, library buildings in all of those places, plus our very robust digital online um, 
resources that are available. We consider that a library in itself, um, and that's open 24-7, which is a, a yeah. great thing. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, I should point out, too, that uh, wherever you may be viewing this, chances are there's a library pretty close to you. And while the services may differ with uh, regard to specificity each time, uh, there's something probably available to you at, at any of these libraries. And, of course, the thing that always boggles the mind is the fact that you can offer all of this and tell us about how they, how they get involved, uh, how much money it does it cost to join a library. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's fairly, we are very frugal, and we're very careful with the dollars that come our, our way. Um, but we are fortunate here in Lackawanna County to be funded both by a county tax and by some funds from the state. We always need other money to augment that, and so we do fundraising as well. Um, and we have, um, most of our libraries have um, friends of the library groups, and those are people who um, advocate for libraries in their community, but also do fundraising and social events to try to help um, underwrite special projects that aren't covered by our general operating well, I, budget. Well, I always ask about volunteers. Do mm -hmm. you make use of volunteers? We do. Um, we have uh, volunteers who we invite to, to join us to do things like helping with perhaps shelving books or preparing crafts for a story time or uh, depending on a person's um, experience and background, perhaps presenting a program or facilitating a program, leading a book discussion. So yes, we do invite volunteers to, to get involved. And once again, the, the prerequisite for taking advantage of these things is merely a library card, is it's it not? A, it is a library card. And a library card is free. You can get one by walking into any one of our libraries in Lackawanna County. You can also get a library card online um, at our website, and that is LCLS, like Lackawanna County Library System, lclshome.org. And if you click on the Join button, fill out just a couple your name and your address, you'll get a card in the mail within a couple of days. It's not even a matter of, of walking in necessarily anymore right. then. exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how do you look toward the future in terms of the Lackawanna County system? Is it looking positive? Are you getting more people to participate in all these various programs? We do, and I think the big thing that we see changing is that our, um, our emphasis now on bringing people together is growing at the same time as um, people coming into the library physically to borrow books is kind of leveling off. Um, so we're seeing a lot more use of digital materials, sure. e-books and audiobooks. We're seeing a lot more people who want to come to the library to get together with their neighbors and to be part of a community. Um, we still, I mean, our, our stock and trade is still circulating books. Um, but, there, but things are changing for sure. Sure, even though that's the old thought of a library, that still is, is valid, although Absolutely. You've, yeah. you've branched out so much more. That's right. Uh, if one has a question about services available at any of these libraries, what do they do, just give a call? Or what? Uh... Yes, absolutely. you can find um, information about addresses, phone numbers, email addresses on our website, again, lclshome.org, for any of our libraries, or you're always welcome to call the Lackawanna County Library System office at 570-348-3003. I think it's just amazing that libraries have prevailed and they've, they've continued to exist. Um, COVID, I don't know, perhaps during it or after it has perhaps driven more people to there. But you should keep in mind that these libraries, again, are accessible merely by a library card. And again, you can get them online or, or by stopping at Mary Garm, you've, you've, uh, You've talked a lot about uh, just how, how well this library system is functioning. And again, there are libraries in your town as well. So don't hesitate to get yourself a card and take advantage. Ask about these various services. But we're glad you were here today to talk to us about some of them. And, and uh, now we'll go downstairs and get a pair of binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm David DeCosmo for Electric City Television. The program is uh, a broadcast uh, on ECTV, and it, you can also catch it on YouTube. So please be watching for our programs uh, at your service. Till we meet again next time, I hope all your news is good. Mm -hmm.